The year was 1944. World War II raged across the Pacific engulfing nations and peoples in a conflict of unprecedented scale. The relentless battles left a trail of destruction in their wake, cities reduced to rubble, and lives forever altered. On the tiny volcanic island of Anatahan, far from the main battlefronts, a different kind of struggle was about to begin, one that would test the limits of human endurance. A Japanese ship, fleeing from American bombers, found itself fatally crippled near the island, its hull breached and its fate sealed. The survivors, 31 men and one woman, managed to swim ashore, their hearts pounding with relief and fear. They had cheated death at sea but their ordeal was far from over. Exhausted and disoriented they faced an uncertain future. Anadahan, a speck of green in a vast ocean offered little solace. Its beauty was deceptive, hiding the harsh realities of survival. Lush jungle covered the interior, concealing dangers both seen and unseen. The dense foliage was both a refuge and a threat. The survivors, battered and bruised, took stock of their meager possessions. They had little more than the clothes on their backs and a few salvaged items. Among them was a young woman named Kazuko Higa. Her presence was a beacon of hope and a source of tension. She had been separated from her husband, a sailor on the doomed vessel. The photograph she clutched was her only connection to him. Now she found herself the only woman in a world of men, a solitary figure in a sea of uncertainty. Fear and uncertainty gripped the survivors. They were stranded on an island with no clear way to signal for help. They were stranded, their fate unknown. The vast ocean around them was both a barrier and a potential escape route. The war was a distant monster, yet its shadow loomed large over their lives. The threat of discovery by enemy forces was ever-present. Little did they know, Anatahan would become their battleground, testing their resilience and pushing them to the brink of human endurance. They would have to rely on each other and their wits to survive the many challenges that lay ahead. The island cast a strange spell, an almost mystical aura that seemed to envelop everything in its grasp. The men, hardened soldiers and seasoned sailors, looked upon Kazuko with a mixture of curiosity and desire, their eyes reflecting the harsh realities they had endured. She was a beacon of femininity in a world gone mad, a stark reminder of the lives they had left behind, the softness and warmth that seemed so distant now. Kazuko, for her part, felt a growing unease, a sense of foreboding that gnawed at her soul. She was adrift in a sea of masculinity, her presence a silent current, shifting the dynamics of the island, creating ripples that none could ignore. The men, hungry and exhausted, tried to establish some semblance of order, clinging to routines and tasks to keep their minds occupied. They organized themselves into groups, scavenging for food and building makeshift shelters, their survival instincts kicking in. Coconuts, fish and wild fruits became their sustenance, the simple meals a lifeline in their struggle. Life was a constant struggle for survival, a daily battle against the elements and the gnawing pangs of hunger, each day blending into the next. Yet amidst the hardship, a spark of hope flickered. They were alive. They had each other, and that camaraderie was their greatest strength. But as the days turned into weeks, and the weeks into months, the isolation began to take its toll wearing down their spirits. The veneer of civilization thinned, revealing the primal instincts that lurked beneath. The raw, untamed nature of humanity exposed in the harshest of conditions. Days bled into weeks, then months, then years. The castaways learned to navigate their island prison. They built sturdier shelters, using salvaged materials from the wrecked ship and timber from the jungle. They mastered the art of fishing, their ingenuity sharpened by necessity. Coconuts became a staple, providing both food and drink. Kazuko, despite her initial fears, adapted with remarkable resilience. She learned to fish and forage alongside the men. Her presence, once a source of tension, became a strange comfort. She reminded them of their humanity, of the world beyond the island, but the island's bounty was finite, as their numbers dwindled, not from the war, but from accidents and tropical diseases, the competition for resources intensified. The men, hardened by years of conflict, grew suspicious of each other. The fragile peace that had existed began to crumble. The island once a sanctuary, transformed into a tinderbox of resentment and desire. Kazuko, the sole woman, became an object of obsession. Alliances shifted like the tides fueled by jealousy and lust. Men who had once fought side by side now viewed each other with suspicion and distrust. Arguments once petty squabbles escalated into violent confrontations. The rules of society, so easily discarded in this isolated world offered little protection. 
The island, bathed in sunshine and surrounded by azure waters, became a stage for a dark and primal drama. Love, or at least the twisted version of it that took root on Anadahan, became a weapon. Kazuko, caught in the crosshairs of desire, found herself both coveted and feared. Her very presence was a catalyst igniting the darkest impulses of the men around her. Section 5 The Price of Power Weapons and Mistrust One day, a chilling discovery shattered the uneasy peace that had settled over the island. The wreckage of an American B-29 bomber shot down months earlier, lay hidden in the jungle, its presence a grim reminder of the ongoing war. Amongst the mangled metal and twisted fuselage, they found a cache of weapons, rifles, pistols and ammunition, a deadly arsenal now in the hands of desperate men. The discovery of these weapons changed everything. The discovery was a curse disguised as a blessing. What seemed like a means of protection quickly turned into a source of fear and mistrust. Possession of a weapon bestowed power, and power, on Anatahan, was a dangerous currency. It created a hierarchy based on fear and intimidation. The men, emboldened by their newfound firepower, grew even more unpredictable. Arguments that once ended in shouting, now ended in gunfire. The island, once a battleground for survival, transformed into a theater of paranoia and violence. Trust was a rare commodity, and suspicion was rampant. Violence, when it erupted, was sudden and brutal. Alliances crumbled overnight and friendships were shattered by the pull of a trigger. Men disappeared under mysterious circumstances, their fates whispered in hushed tones. The jungle became a place of secrets and shadows. The island, soaked in sunshine and lapped by gentle waves, hid a dark secret. Beneath its serene exterior, it was a place of constant danger. It had become a place where life held little value, where death was but a trigger pull away. The weapons had turned paradise into a living nightmare. Years drifted by, each one etching lines of despair on the faces of the castaways. The war, the reason for their isolation, had ended, but Anadahan remained untouched by this news. The outside world, with its promise of civilization and peace, seemed like a distant dream. Rumors of the war's end reached them, carried on the whispers of the wind. Japanese leaflets, dropped from passing planes, offered proof that their ordeal was over. Yet, fear and distrust had taken root so deeply, that many refused to believe. They were trapped, not by the island, but by their own paranoia. Kazuko, weathered by years of hardship and heartbreak, clung to a sliver of hope. She yearned for freedom, for a chance to reclaim her life. But escape seemed impossible. The island once a prison of circumstance had become a cage of their own making. One day Kazuko made a decision. She had endured enough. She would take fate into her own hands. Secretly she began repairing a small damaged boat, salvaged from the wreckage years ago. It was a desperate gamble, a fragile vessel against the vastness of the Pacific. She confided in one man, a fisherman who had shown her kindness. He helped her gather supplies, food, water, a makeshift sail. Their plan was risky, their chances slim, but for Kazuko, it was a chance worth taking. She would rather face the perils of the open ocean than spend another day trapped on that island of madness. As the sun dipped below the horizon casting long shadows across the beach, they slipped away unnoticed. The island, shrouded in darkness, seemed to hold its breath. Kazuko, her heart pounding with a mixture of hope and terror, pushed the boat into the waves and set sail for the unknown. Kazuko's gamble paid off. After days adrift, battling hunger, thirst and the relentless sun, she was spotted by a passing American ship. The USS Mississinewa, a fleet oiler on a routine patrol, received her faint distress signals. The crew could hardly believe their eyes. The story she told shocked and horrified them. They immediately dispatched a landing party to Anatahan. The remaining islanders, their reign of fear shattered by Kazuko's daring escape, surrendered without resistance. The nightmare of Anatahan was finally over. News of their rescue and Kazuko's harrowing tale spread like wildfire. The world, weary from war, was captivated by their story of survival and the dark side of human nature that had unfolded on that remote island. Anatahan, once unknown became a symbol of both the resilience of the human spirit and the destructive power of isolation. The return to civilization was bittersweet. Haunted by the ghosts of Anadahan, the survivors struggled to readjust to a world that had moved on without them. They faced suspicion, disbelief and judgment for the things they had done and endured. Kazuko, hailed as a heroine by some, found herself the subject of intense scrutiny. Her story, a testament to her courage and resilience was often sensationalized, 
her voice lost in the clamor for details of the island's dark secrets. Anatahan, the island that had held them captive for so long, continued to exert a powerful hold on their lives. It was a scar on their souls, a reminder of the fragility of civilization and the darkness that can bloom in the absence of hope. Their story, a cautionary tale of survival and the human cost of war, continues to resonate, a testament to the enduring strength of the human spirit, even in the face of unimaginable adversity.